Cynical Duchess presents Books to Read from Around the World Isolation Edition This video was sponsored by the number 7 The first book I chose is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon from Spain It is 1945 post-war crumbling Barcelona and Daniel Semperi, the son of a book dealer, is taken by his father to the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, which is where books go when everybody's forgotten them. Obviously. Daniel Semperi finds a spellbinding book over there. It is called The Shadow of the Wind, and he's just reading it from cover to cover. But when he starts looking for more books by this author, Julian Cara, he realizes that someone has been systematically trying to destroy every copy of every one of Julian Cara's books, and he might just have the last copy. This book is filled with gothic architecture and beautiful language and wording. It's a definite murder mystery, and there are lots of secret love trysts in abandoned houses. So if you're into something like that, if you're into like good literature and vocabulary, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. This book is for you. <laughs> Next we have I Am The Messenger by Marcus Zusak from Australia. The story follows Ed, who is a 19-year-old underage cab driver and pretty much a failure at life. He's with his friends at the bank one day when he accidentally stops a bank robbery and somehow becomes a local hero. But that's when the first playing card arrives in the mail. They always have different names, different addresses, and different people that Ed is supposed to help. Until the question remains, who is sending these playing cards in the mail and what is he trying to convey? This is a story for underdogs, for people who have ever felt that life or their friends are just passing them by, because it truly drives down the point that anyone can be amazing, even the most ordinary of us. This is absolutely my favorite book because whenever I sit down and think like, I'm just not good enough, all my friends are better than me, I just crack open this book and look at Ed who is pretty much going nowhere in life and ends up becoming so great and so amazing and a true hero. The next book I have is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee for South Korea. While this wasn't written in South Korea, it still is a beautiful account of the Japanese occupation and the atrocities that happened during that time. It follows one family from the 1900s until the 1990s as they leave Korea, try to go to Japan in order to survive, and then have to open up this pachinko parlor, which is an illegal gambling parlor because nobody else would hire them during that time. And it goes from mother to daughter to son to grandson as you can see everything that they had to go through in order to just live. The next book I have is The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri for India. I honestly wish I could have read this book first before explaining it to you because this is on my TBR list because it just sounds so poignant and filled with depth and I know that I could explain it so much better if I had read it, but I will try. Basically, it's about the Ganguly family who have just had an arranged marriage and are, and are immigrating from India to Cambridge, Massachusetts. While the husband is very quick to adapt to American culture, the wife is not and it shows when they have a child and they name him Gogol. And Gogol has to grow up in Cambridge as both an Indian and an American, and he has to battle those differences in culture, in assimilation, in bearing the namesake of his name that is so alien and different from what Americans are used to, yet still carry so much of his heritage that he's not sure he's so connected to. I am so excited for this book. I mean, I am an Orthodox Jew transplanted within America, so I can definitely understand the battle between two cultures and having to intermix those two. So yeah, it, it just seems like such a beautiful book. For Southeast Asia, I actually teamed up with Mei Cho, who is a Bruneian booktuber, and she is going to tell you about her favorite Southeast Asian book. Mei, take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Mei. If you're looking for a book from Malaysia, look no further than The Weight of Our Sky by Hannah Elkin. This is a young adult novel set in the 1969 race riots in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia between the Chinese and Malay ethnic groups. Our main character is Malati, who is separated from her mother the night the riot breaks out, and she has to navigate the flame-filled, mob-ridden, dangerous streets of KL to reconnect with her mother. All the while, she battles with her OCD. 
which she believes manifests as a jinn that lives inside her, an evil Malay spirit that shows her images of her mother's gruesome death if she does not count or do exactly as he says. This book tackles the issues of race and religion and mental health and how all three can be reconciled. This book is about OCD and anxiety, about hope and heartbreak, about survival and overcoming your figurative inner demons to fight and fight and fight. And I love this book. Okay, bye. <laughs> Also, we are going to make a video together, and when that comes out, I will put her video in the description box below. For Nigeria, I chose Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. It follows two twin sisters, Olana and Kaineni, members of the Igbo elite, who are completely different and gravitate towards extremely different men, one of them to a university professor who is pro the pan-Africanist cause, while the other one to an Englishman who is pro the Biafran cause. Yet when the Nigerian civil war erupts, their lives turn into complete disarray. I actually haven't read this book yet. This is on my TBR. I know absolutely nothing about Nigerian culture and history, so I am especially excited for this book. The only things I know about Nigerian culture are Yemi Alade and techno, and I don't really think that counts. So I am especially excited for this book. The next book I chose was Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan from Singapore. The story follows New Yorker Rachel Chu when she agrees to follow her boyfriend to visit his family in Singapore for the summer. What he forgets to tell her is that he's actually the most eligible bachelor in Singapore and that his family belongs to the 1% elite of Singaporean high society. And she's about to step into a shark pit of social climbers who do not want her there. The reason why I love this book so much is because this is a biting satirical social commentary on social class in Singapore disguised as a chick flick novel. Besides for the fact that Kevin Kwan's world building is excellent, you feel Singapore, you taste the food, you understand the language and the and the slang that he uses. He uses a lot of footnotes throughout the novel to explain things that you wouldn't really get just from reading it. Furthermore, a lot of the characters in this book are based off of real people. The Ladouris mentioned in this book are actually based off of the Kaduris in Hong Kong. And one of the fashionistas in this book, Astrid Leong, is actually based off of an amalgamation of a lot of fashionistas. For example, a Hardy Vangalista from the Philippines, as well as others. So if you like fashion, glam, a look into Singapore high society, and just a real life look into the way that rich people think and a satirical social commentary on it, you should definitely check out this book. Also, I mean, it's a series. What more could you want? <laughs> The next book I have is Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi for America, specifically New York City. The story follows Pablo Rind, who is an NYU college dropout working a graveyard working a graveyard shift at a bodega. He is up to his eyeballs in credit card debt and loans, and his life is going nowhere. Leanna Smart, on the other hand, is an international superstar. She has traveled the world and is number one in pretty much every country, and yet because of all of her success, everything has started to seem a little bit meaningless. It's 5 a.m. when she walks into the bodega when Pablo is there, and that's when things start to get a little bit complicated. The reason why I chose this book for America is because this is the anthem of the East Coast and the West Coast in 2020. While it doesn't encompass all of the different flavors of America, I definitely feel like this is such an accurate representation of the way that young people think during our time. I definitely want to show this to my children in 20 years so that they can see the way that we thought. Every character in this book is pretty much biracial. Pablo Rind is half Korean and half Pakistani, while Leanna Smart is half Mexican and half European. This book is riddled with so much internet slang and just different Instagram references and things that you would only get if you're a millennial or Gen Z. And it really plays into PC culture and things that are very important to us nowadays. So if you like social media, the intricacies of fame, if you are biracial or you know something about New York City, you should definitely check out this book. Next, I have In Order to Live by Yunmi Park from North Korea. 
This tells the autobiography of Yunmi as she grew up in North Korea, then escaped into China, got sex trafficked in China at the age of 13, and then managed to escape all the way to South Korea, where she is now a renowned activist and writer at the tender age of 26, which is only two years older than me. That's insane. I learned so much from this book, especially about the way that North Korean people grew up. You learn about the propaganda and the fear, but also those little pockets of joy and color. You learn about the Jangmadang generation, which is when Yunmi grew up, which is basically the black market generation. A lot of contraband things have been slowly getting into North Korea more and more, and it's been slowly changing their mindset from within. And she did all of this when she was just a teen, like such a young teen until her early 20s and I honestly one of my goals is to meet this girl because she is amazing literally I want to meet you please <laughs> the next book I have is The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary from France it follows Renee who is 50 years old a little bit plump and a little bit plain looking and is the apartment lobby concierge of a very fancy snobby apartment complex in Paris she loves books philosophy and literature Yet, because that's not what an apartment building concierge is supposed to look like, she hides it and she doesn't tell anybody about what she truly loves. Then there is Paloma, 12 years old, a genius, and filthy rich living in this apartment complex. She has decided that her parents' lifestyle is completely meaningless and has decided to end her life on her 13th birthday by setting fire to her own apartment. When a new tenant comes in, a Japanese man named Ozu, he sees right through the disguises of both Paloma and Renee and their lives start to intertwine as they both start to find a reason to live again. This book is like fine, dry red wine. The prose is absolutely beautiful, but it is not an easy read. There are a lot of references to literature, a lot of philosophical musings in here, yet if you want something with a little bit more depth, you should definitely check this book out, especially if you love Paris. The next book I have is Naoko by Kaigo Higashino from Japan. The story follows Haisuke, who wakes up one morning to the news that his wife, Naoko, has died in a bus accident and his daughter, Monami, is in a coma in the hospital. When Monami wakes up, she seems to think that she's Naoko, until she starts telling Kaigo... Kaigo? Until she starts telling Haisuke things that only Naoko would know. So, Kaigo Igoshino is honestly my favorite Japanese writer. I know I I feel like Loki Murakami is like one of those writers that you like pretend to love because like it's like great literature. <laughs> this guy knows how to write mystery novels. His novels don't only feature the mystery in question, he always puts in an element of psychology and questions why people do the things that they do. All of his characters are always so complex. They're never good nor bad, but always just a spectrum of gray. And it is such a pleasure to read because it feels like you're really reading about humans, not just caricatures in a mystery novel. For Ireland, I chose The Carnival at Bray by Jesse Ann Foley. It centers around Maggie Lynch, who is a teen living in 90s Chicago where everything grunge and nirvana set the rules. When Maggie's dysfunctional mother uproots her entire family to move to Ireland to marry her new boyfriend, Colm, Maggie must now navigate the unfamiliar waters of Irish culture and society. When sudden death strikes the family, leaving behind one Nirvana concert ticket, Maggie embarks on a runaway pilgrimage from Dublin to Rome to figure out who she is and where she belongs in this chaos that is called life. If you like anything grunge, 90s, Nirvana, Irish, you definitely should check out this book. I read this when I was around 18 years old and when I finished it, all I could think of was wow. It deals with coming from a dysfunctional family and trying to separate yourself from that. It also deals a lot with when someone you really, really admire lets you down. It's centered around the death of Kurt Cobain, so it draws a parallel between someone really close in Maggie's life as well as the death of Kurt Cobain, who she really, really admired. I recommend anybody checking out this book, especially if you love grunge and the 90s. Next we have A Hero Born by Jin Young from China. Set in 13th century China at the end of the Song Dynasty, the story follows Guo Jing, who is the son of a skilled martial artist. 
when his father is murdered by the enemy Jin army, his mother flees with him to Mongolia where he is raised among the warriors of Genghis Khan. As he grows up, a bunch of martial artists from his past, the Seven Heroes of the South, scour the country to find Guo Jing and train him in the martial arts that is his destiny. This book was written in the 1950s and it is hailed as like the Harry Potter or the Game of Thrones or the Lord of the Rings of Chinese literature. Literally every Chinese kid has grown up with this series and it has been turned into a bunch of TV shows and films and video games. This book actually started the whole genre of wuxia fiction in China, which is basically fantastical martial arts. There are so many intricate martial arts combat scenes in here. So if you're looking for a book filled with like adventure, love triangles, a lot of revenge, betrayal, fulfilling of destinies, you should definitely check this book out. It's also 12 books in a series and only four of them have been translated as of right now into English, but they're coming out with more and more every single year, so stay tuned. Next we have Germany, Inkart by Cornelia Funk. I hope that's how you pronounce her name. The story follows Maggie, who loves books and has grown up around books. Her father, Mo, is a bookbinder. However, despite the fact that he as well loves books so much, he's never read aloud to Maggie. The reason? Mo is able to read characters outside of books and bring them into his world. And one fateful night, when Mo was reading to Maggie's mom, he accidentally unleashed the, the villain Capricorn into his world and sucked Maggie's mom into the story that he was reading. And Mo and Maggie have been running from Capricorn ever since. And then one fateful night, Maggie discovers that she can also read characters out of books. And that's when the adventure truly begins. I first read this series when I was around 11 years old. It is not for 11 year olds though. This is the kind of rich, beautiful book that literally any age can enjoy and get something out of. Even though it is middle grade, it's just one of those beautiful world building novels that you just get sucked into. It's still one of my favorite books after so many years. Like half my life has been lived since I've read that book and I still love it so much. The next book I chose is American Street by Ibiza Boy for Haiti. It features Fabiola Toussaint, who leaves with her mother from Haiti to immigrate to America. But after they leave Port-au-Prince, Haiti, Fabiola's mother is detained by U.S. immigration and Fabiola has to go on her own onto Detroit and thus navigate her really loud American cousins, the gritty west side of Detroit, a new school, and an unexpected romance. While this book is not completely set in Haiti itself, it's still a story about Haitians and the Haitian experience and moving from one country to another. The author, Ibi Zaboy, is also Haitian and she also emigrated to the US when she was young, just like Fabiola in the story. And I'm excited to learn about a culture that I don't know that much about. If you're looking for something about Afghanistan, I would recommend A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Husseini. Set during, political, set during a lot of political unrest in Kabul, Afghanistan from the 60s to the early 2000s, it follows Layla, a teenager growing up in the 90s, whose parents are killed in a bombing and she eventually gets roped into marrying this very abusive husband where she ultimately flees, does find true love, and just fights for her independence the entire way. I read this book when I was 12th grade in high school. I was actually in a bookstore and the shopkeeper just gave it to me for free and I just fell in love with it. There are so many undertones of feminism and the importance of education in this book. It is truly a story of just fighting for your independence and survival and just sticking true to your beliefs despite everything around you. For Sweden, I chose The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Jonasson. The story follows Alan Carlson, who is about to turn 100, but right before his 100th birthday party, he climbs out the window of his old folks home with just one question on his mind. Where can he travel to from here? But not before stealing a suitcase from a very unpleasant young man at the bus stop that just so happens to be filled with $50 million. And thus begins the chase of the century. I've wanted to read this book for years and it is on my Amazon list as soon as I finish the cluster that I already ordered just now. 
I honestly, this book is hilarious and there are so many rave reviews, so I am super excited for this. The book also deals with a lot of different themes in terms of ageism and how old you truly have to be in order to live. For Taiwan, I chose Want by Cindy Pond. In a futuristic Taipei, which is heavily, heavily polluted, the world is divided by the rich yos and the poor maize. So the yos have enough money to buy these expensive suits that protect them from the pollution run by a company called Jincorp, while the maize are just left to languish in the pollution. Jason Joe, an orphaned May, is convinced that it's Jincorp that's actually the one that's been polluting Taipei so that he can sell more suits. So Jason and his friends decide to infiltrate the rich yo world in order to figure out whether it really is Jin Corp that is behind all the pollution. But in order to do that, Jason must kidnap a girl from the Yo world in order to get some ransom money to make them look rich to infiltrate the world. But it just so happens that Jason kidnaps Jin Corp's daughter. Even though this book is not from Taiwan itself, it's still really, really cool to see Taipei in such a futuristic and colorful light. And if this book was made into a movie, I would definitely be enjoying seeing all those different futuristic gadgets and colors that Cindy Pond describes in the book.